Knowing what I know now about fame, would I give it up? The answer is honestly no. I just think I'm made for it. Nobody knows fame better than Kim Kardashian. We've just began to untap the power that she has. She broke the old rules. The publicist looked at me and said, honey, keeping on the cover of any of these magazines is never going to happen. And pioneered a new path to celebrity. She's a trailblazer for social media. You used to pay hundreds of thousands of dollars to people to brand you. The way we use social media now is because of Kim Kardashian. It's like all these things I never dreamed of in a billion years that I would ever have the opportunity to do. It's been such a crazy journey. This idea that people like to keep drilling away of you're famous because you're famous. Oh, that question's so stupid to me now. Famous for being famous. I'm here, aren't I? I don't have to dance, I don't have to sing. I think my talent is marketing and to just feel out what really good moves are. Kim's rise to fame was an instant. The elitist world, they looked down upon people like reality stars. I had an agent that demanded that I stop working with her. They said that she'll never be successful and you're gonna go down right with her and you're gonna lose your entire career. But I knew in my heart that that wasn't true. I eventually left that agent because I refused to, to stop working with Kim. So how did a reality TV star, best known for her revealing selfies, build a business empire worth hundreds of millions of dollars and get enough clout to gain access to the Oval Office? For Kim Kardashian, I guess this time it's keeping up with President Trump. When you have enough celebrity to get your way into the White House, that's huge. I mean, that's Oprah. In the early 2000s, Kim was an unknown. You excited? Yeah. But new ways to communicate let her forge a new path to fame. Back in the day to be an A-list celebrity, you had to be an actor or a singer or a performer. Kim's kind of changed that. Kim has democratized fame by redefining what it means to be talented. Before, we didn't think that taking a selfie was talent. But now, Kim has shown how you can actually build a multi-million dollar empire out of that. She's a trailblazer for social media. You used to pay hundreds of thousands of dollars to people to brand you. And Kim is over here, the power all in her own hand. It's so cute. The way we use social media now is in large part because of Kim Kardashian, because of how she played the game early. Kim is an OG. She's the originator of this media power. Social media happened simultaneously while her family was becoming known on television. And so the combination rocketed her to a superstar we've never seen before. Hey, hey, I see myself. When we were little, Kim would joke about being famous, but I never really took her seriously. And then all of a sudden, one day I woke up and she was one of the most famous people in the world. I'm endorsing products right now. Part of her brand was built the old way, with products and endorsements. When we first started out, the one thing Kim and I decided was that we were going to make a chart of her goals and then go out there and try to do it. She's in the makeup industry. She's also into fashion and clothing and she's also a killer mom and wife. She's proud of it. So whatever Kim does, she does it because she's proud. But the true core of Kim's brand was something new. It was herself. She's been able to make herself even more successful than anybody else probably could have. And the breakthrough power to connect directly with her fans as no one had done before. We're all here, ready to go. Kim has done a lot more than sell products with this new power. Kim has always embraced that she is curvy and that she loves that she has a big butt. I love that. People don't want to believe it. My butt is real. <laughs> Kim's impact on female beauty overturned old traditional standards. 
For many years, the sex symbols have all looked pretty similar. And then Kim came along and said, you know what, no, I'm not going to conform. I'm actually going to stand out by owning my uniqueness. And in doing so, she busted the mold and she redefined what it meant to be a sex symbol in Hollywood. She doesn't look like every other woman who was on TV. And I think that appealed to a lot of people because most people don't look like a six foot blonde model. Kim Kardashian was one of the first people to not only make that acceptable, but make that something people strived for. Girls just could not get enough of that look. They wanted to look like Kim Kardashian, and they still do a decade later. She has really elevated people's self-esteem. Young women who didn't feel good about themselves feel like, oh, now I feel beautiful. Well, if Kim is speaking body language, then she the motherfucking dictionary. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm talking about? You know what I'm talking about? No. <laughs> Early in her career, Kim's power as a beauty icon was doubted, even dismissed. I remember back in the day, I said, I just want to get a magazine cover like Cosmo. And the publicist looked at me and said, honey, let's start setting some more realistic goals, because you being on the cover of any of these magazines is never going to happen. Looking back to like a Vogue cover, multiple Vogue covers, I think Kanye and I were the first interracial couple on Vogue magazine. I can't believe this is my life. <laughs> Besides Vogue, Kim has been on the cover of every magazine that matters. But in 2014, she did a shoot for a small niche magazine that brought a new phrase into pop culture. Break the internet, that phrase wasn't ever used before. The phrase is used everywhere now. The winner of Break the Internet Webby, Kim Kardashian West. Nude selfies till I die. Kim proved her critics wrong. She brought huge changes on her rise to fame. I don't think my career path has ever been really done in this way before. That's why I've always been so free and always done what I want. I am very mindful that there is a huge influence that I have with my following, and I try to do the right thing. Kim didn't fade away quickly, as the haters predicted. She's had the power to stay on top. The girl knows how to dream, and when she does, she makes it a reality. Coming up. Say my family was always super close, except when my dad was representing OJ. The tape that you did not want to get out, got out. I'm really sorry. Kim, I don't know what to do. <laughs> Kim called me screaming. It was the scariest thing I've ever been through in my entire life. When you grow up in Beverly Hills, you can't avoid hearing about celebrities and hearing about fame. Good, Kim. That was very good. Fame is nothing new to Kim. She's been around the biggest stars since she was a little girl. All right, you won't be in the movie. It's all Kimberly. Her childhood in Beverly Hills gave her an early, close-up look at stardom. We used to kick our soccer ball over the next-door neighbor's gate so that we could have an excuse to go over there, and it was Bruce Springsteen's house and Jay Leno would drive by in like one of his crazy cars while we would be walking down the street. <laughs> Kim saw what was going on around her and I think that she wanted to do something in the entertainment industry because I think she found it exciting. Growing up around stars was part of Kim's everyday life but a breakthrough television show sparked her vision of a brand new path to fame. The Real World was launched in 1992. Kim and I were 12 years old, and Kim was just mesmerized. She was like, I have got to get on The Real World. And I was like, why? I said to her, actually, oh my god, like, this is what I want to do when I'm older. I want to be on a reality show. <laughs> Take a picture! A big part of Kim's success comes from the old-fashioned value of hard work. Chris Jenner trying to hook up with you. Why don't you give me Which a her call? mother instilled from a young age. My mom, in the summertime at 7 a.m., she would come in and it would be 7.01. And if we were sleeping, God forbid, she would yell at us and say, we're going to be homeless or drug addicts if we don't wake up. How dare we sleep in in the summer? We have to be motivated. All right, so let's like, okay, that's it. Oh, 
Chloe at 7.20. We had to get up at 7 a.m. and make our bed and get out of our room. I don't know why that was her main rule, and in the summertime, that was so annoying, but I think it definitely made me motivated. Kim, you're supposed to be there by 9.30. I have mom strangling me. <laughs> Tell me all about yes. it. Although her parents separated before she was a teen, Kim stayed close to both her mother, Chris, and father, Robert Kardashian, an attorney and successful entrepreneur. I really do see a lot of Robert in Kim. I remember when Kim decided that she wanted to be an entrepreneur. My dad was really strict and I didn't get an allowance. I had to get a job. So I started to sell things on eBay. She went to her dad and she said, Dad, would you loan me a couple thousand dollars because I want to buy these boots and I want to turn around and sell them on eBay. And her dad said, well, Kim, I'll loan you the money, but you need to sign this contract and I'm going to charge you interest. <laughs> so he was trying to teach her business 101. My dad was the best, so close to his family, would always tell us growing up that blood is thicker than water. So I think I got my family unity from my dad for sure and my strong work ethic. I just feel like that's really who me and my sisters and my brother are. I'd say when my parents got a divorce when I turned 10 years old, that's when things got tough. Now let me look at Kimberly's face. Come here, Kim. Kimberly. And then six months later, my mom married Bruce Jenner, and life was good. He had four kids, my mom had four kids. They thought it was perfect. It was fun. Bruce is the sweetest thing ever. He's amazing, he's the greatest stepdad anyone could ask for. Is the red light on or off? On. Oh, then I'm being recorded. Hi, everybody. Hi. We're so excited. In 1994, when Kim was only 13, the family faced a serious rift. O.J. Simpson is sitting in the back seat, and he has a gun at his head. After saying goodbye to his mother, O.J. was finally arrested. Kim's godfather and one of Robert Kardashian's closest friends, O.J. Simpson, was charged with the murder of his ex-wife, Nicole Brown Simpson, and Ron Goldman. My family was always super close, except for the time when my dad was representing OJ, and my mom was Nicole's best friend. Hey, Nick, say something. Like what? I don't know. Robert Kardashian renewed his law license to join the defense team for the trial. One day, my dad took me and Courtney into the trial, and then my mom happened to be sitting with Nicole's family, and we looked over, and my mom's like looking at us, like, what are you girls doing here? And why are you sitting on that side? It was like the first time my family really got divided. The family was divided by their own personal loyalties, but the split in public opinion could turn ugly and racist. During the trial, we all went to dinner with my dad, and we come back from dinner and on the side of his car, it said N-word lover. And my dad was so upset that his kids had to witness his car get destroyed. Going through the O.J. Simpson trial had a very strong effect on her life later on and certainly would have helped develop a really thick skin. Observing how her father handled the stress of the trial stuck with Kim. It was a good lesson for me because people always wanted to talk at school and make up stories. I remember driving into my dad's house and there's news cameras. It's like Robert Kardashian's mistress pulls up to his house. I was like, this can't be real. They lie like this. I learned the lesson of just not everything is what you think it is. We, the jury, in the above entitled action, find the defendant, Orenthal James Simpson, not guilty of the crime of murder. All the kids stayed home from school, and we saw the verdict, and then afterwards, my dad called us and was like, okay, meet me at Uncle OJ's house. We're all gonna go there and, like, celebrate. And now, if I tell people, like, oh, yeah, I was at Uncle OJ's house right after the verdict, and I didn't even think it was a big deal, it's just, like, crazy to me to even think that that was normal life. After the OJ trial, my dad went to see a psychic 
and a psychic told him, you know, your last name Kardashian is gonna be known worldwide. And it's not now, it's not because of your OJ fame. And my dad was like, okay, yeah, this is exactly why I don't like psychics. They're just, you know, they make up the most ridiculous things that aren't true. And it's just so trippy now to be like, it was just right. In 2003, Robert Kardashian became seriously ill and died of cancer. My dad was everything to us. I know he would have been so proud and so excited. It would have been really amazing if he was here. With our dad not being here, we had to rely on each other and on ourselves rather than knowing he's going to take care of everything. No, don't touch it. Don't touch it. The passing of my dad changed all of us. You know, he gave us the foundation to know what we wanted and then knowing how to make it happen for ourselves. Now this is on us. The key to my success has been the support system of my family and always having each other's back no matter what. Coming up. Keeping up with the Kardashians like changed everything. I said, you just have to be real and raw and show everything. I definitely see the evolution of my fame. Everything has just evolved as time has gone on. And I think we've gotten to the point where we're like, we're here. Like it's past the point of a quick 15 minutes. In 2006, before she was famous, Kim started spending time with bona fide celebrity Paris Hilton. Paris, how are you today? Good. You have to remember, we, we grew up with the Hiltons. She had known Paris her entire life. At that point, Paris was huge. Paris was everywhere. And very soon, so was Kim. Very nice, very nice. Very nice. She was best known as being Paris Hilton's sidekick, but in reality, I think that girl was on a mission. I remember we were sitting in her SLR Mercedes, and the doors flip up this way. And at that point, the paparazzi would lay on the ground to try to get a picture of you up your dress. And she said, OK, we need to make sure you don't give them that. She don't want nobody to see her pussy. Paris even put Kim in several episodes of her reality series, The Simple Life. I didn't know that I was gonna become famous myself, but now looking back, she was such a great like mentor for me. I really am grateful for my experiences with her. She's a huge, huge reason of my success. Hey, okay, love you. Bye, gorgeous. Bye. Yeah, but Kim's breakthrough to her own fame didn't happen right away. Prior to keeping up with the Kardashians, the girls were trying to pitch a show all about their Dash boutique. I told my sisters that filming a TV show in our store would be the best press ever. Kim would pop in and out as the stylist, and Chloe and Courtney would be running the day-to-day -day operations, but ultimately, it didn't go anywhere. Kim's fame did not come from Paris or Dash. It came from her mother. My best friend, Kathy Lee Gifford, would tell me constantly, you guys need a show. Nobody would believe what goes on in your life. <laughs> And this went on for a couple of years until I met the casting director for Dancing with the Stars. And she came over for dinner one night I wish I was a and was just watching all of this chaos with hey, me and my hey, kids. Hey, hey, hey. Get off of me, Daddy. And she goes, This is just crazy. I've got to introduce you to Ryan Seacrest. He loved the idea. He pitched it to E, and literally, I think in 30 days, we were filming. We're always doing something as far as, you know, entertainment. So this was sort of a natural next step. When we first started filming, I sat my kids down and I said, you just have to be real and raw and show everything. Swear to God, I'm leaving. Everything's about you. You need to ditch the bitch. You are so pregnant, dude. Be you. Let it all hang out. I think that was the key to the success. <laughs> Keeping Up with the Kardashians debuted in October 2007. The show was a hit, and the breakout star was Kim. Welcome to my family. Kim, right here. I'm Kim Kardashian. The princess is in the building. She was just a girl who was willing to put it all out there. 
the real fame was yet to come. When I first started the show, Kim Kardashian lived in a condo. We used to be able to hang out at our apartment, no paparazzi. But that changed. When Keeping Up With The Kardashians premiered, Twitter was still a new thing, and Kim really ran with it. She was so shrewd in how she dealt with it. She was able not only to engage with her fans, but she actually included them on what she was doing. For the first time, normal people were allowed access to celebrity. It wasn't really about the show as much anymore. It then became about what we were posting and what we were doing and what our real lives were 24-7. Social media is really a double-edged sword. It could be really toxic as far as comments and things people say and what they post. So I think that you have to have a balance. I like to give a good mix of personal and promotional stuff online. It launched her into like a completely different orbit. She was known for being like Paris's sidekick and now she's one of the most famous women in the world. After keeping up with the Kardashians, everything just started becoming bigger and bigger and bigger. And we're like, oh my God, what do we do with all this? Kim knew how to manipulate the paparazzi to increase her fame. I'd be like, Kim, we gotta do something crazy. We were in New York and Britney Spears is in this hotel, locked up, you know, in her room. We know this, there's paparazzi outside. And so he's like, oh, let's stop by here. We got a ride in a Rolls Royce. We pull up, paparazzi got us getting out. We go literally hide in a lobby, in a phone booth, wait 10 minutes and then we come out and then the next day it's like, Kim went to see Britney. They say in the press that we're there to have dinner with Britney Spears. This whole thing, like, didn't even happen. She didn't, I don't even think she knew Britney at that point. Two years after we started the show, fans started getting really crazy. We couldn't walk down the street anymore. Hey, you guys, can I get in the car? I've got yeah. <laughs> we would go out to lunch and it would become unsafe the amount of paparazzi and people that would line up to take pictures with them and watch her eat. There are times when I wish I can just go to the grocery store, but it's an honor that people have grown to like me for me just being myself. It has been insane at times when we go shopping in Miami. By the time we'd walk out, we'd all be like ripped apart. But it, you know what, it, it's part of the game, it's part of, part of the fame. I remember years and years ago, just to stay out there, she would go to things that she didn't ordinarily want to go to, but that was her work. She made a plan, she worked it. She's basically made her life, her dream. Coming up. There's those moments in life that shake you to your core. This was a terrifying, life-changing moment. It was probably the scariest thing I've ever been through in my entire life. I'm gonna try not to cry. <laughs> don't cry. I'm sorry. I'm really sorry, Kim. I don't know what to do. Kim's dreams of success were almost derailed early in her career. Before keeping up with the Kardashians, when all that sex tape stuff was happening, it was really, really hard. It was hard. It was like devastating to the whole family. In 2007, Kim dealt with the explicit video she made with ex-boyfriend Ray J in 2002. If there was one moment that was going to derail Kim Kardashian, it would have been the sex tape. The tape that you did not want to get out got out. Yes, it got out. Instead of hiding from the scandal, Kim faced it head on. Why did you make a sex tape? <laughs> <laughs> I don't feel like I really did anything wrong. I was in a relationship very much in love, and it's just really unfortunate that the world is going to see something that's really private. Everyone sort of had become aware of her her sex tape. And, you know, I think that that's always going to be something that was, uh, you know, veiled in a little bit of controversy. Kim took what she learned from her parents about overcoming adversity and moved on. She continued moving forward with her agenda of becoming one of the biggest superstars in the world. In 2011, Kim was put to the test again with her marriage to NBA star Chris Humphreys. <gasps> 
the wedding was a spectacle. Now you're stuck with me forever. Literally everyone in the world knew about this wedding. Just 72 days after the fairy tale ceremony, Kim filed papers to end the brief marriage. That was the first time she faced serious backlash. The people who had loved her and adored her and grown with her were mad at her. They felt like it was just for show. Everyone thought it was fake. And I'm just saying this wasn't it. This wasn't the right match. You know, I wasted everyone's money. I wasted everyone's everything, and I feel bad. She was feeling like the world was going to hate her. She was like, well, guys, I'm sorry. I got us this far, and now I'm taking us down. But Kim found a way to bounce back. I remember saying to her, this will pass. Just have fun this season. Even bad things pass. Kim let people into her life, showing that she, like everybody else, was imperfect. And I think that's very much how she managed to overcome that. Kim turned the split from Chris Humphreys into a challenge that won back her followers and increased her fame. This is big. Kanye meets the Kardashians. Kanye West been photographed all around New York City and other places. I met Kanye in 2002. He would ask everyone, like, who I was, and they always said, like, oh, she, you know, has a boyfriend. We just always kept on, like, connecting and coming into each other's lives. And then he invited me to Paris to his fashion show, and then that's when it, like, happened. That's when we started our relationship. And then I was like, why didn't this happen sooner? It was just right. But when she started dating Kanye West, the haters came out again. I mean, everyone would tell him, you can't be with her. She's a reality star. She's going to sink your career. And he was just like, but I love her. Like, I don't care. Anytime I was around her, I saw her. I, it was a magnetic attraction to this force of energy. She was good, pure, happy, loving, brave, courageous, strong. Sharing her relationship on social media did not stop Kim from finding true love, but sharing too much can have serious consequences. I was in Paris, it was fashion week. I've been showing off my new diamond ring. Kanye got me this like 20 carat diamond ring and I brought all of my jewels, everything I possibly had to Paris with me. Kim and I went to the Givenchy show to watch Kendall walk and then came back to change to go out for the night and Kim decided to stay home. Right as I was about to fall asleep, I heard guys running up the stairs. They wanted my ring and my jewelry, so I didn't fight back. I just gave them everything and they tied me up. They wrapped duct tape over my eyes and my mouth. It was the scariest thing I've ever been through in my entire life, just thinking that, you know, you're about to die. You're just kind of bracing yourself for the moment that they're going to shoot you and kill you. That 10 minutes really changed my whole life. The robbers escaped with a huge diamond ring worth approximately $4 million. Kim was left, still bound by duct tape and plastic restraints. Eventually, she managed to free herself and make contact with her sister, Courtney. Kim called me screaming. I'm gonna try not to cry. That, I can't even talk about it. I'm sorry. She called me and my legs like went out. I remember I like fell to the floor. Kim was really, really shaken up. We just did all the work that she had to do with the police and got out of there. That moment, it's truly the scariest experience. I can't even, it's like, you can't even describe how scary it is. Kim, are you, are you okay? Kim! There are a, a lot of thoughts running through my head related to that time, and I don't like to watch those movies. Memories are movies in your mind. I like to watch the happy ones. I don't search for the bad. In the aftermath of Kim's nightmare in Paris, there were skeptics who suspected the robbery was a hoax. 
People like Howard Stern said that I should go to jail if this is fate. Some people thought that she was flaunting it. You cannot display your wealth and then be surprised that some people want to share it with you. She was all over social media wearing millions of dollars of jewels. But this wasn't a joke. This was a terrifying, life-changing moment. Three months after the robbery, French police arrested 17 suspects believed to be connected to the crime. Ten of those suspects were later indicted. It makes me so upset to think about it, but like either they're gonna shoot me in the back, or if I make it and they don't, there's no way out. There's those moments in life that really change you and like shake you to your core. And my robbery was definitely that moment for me. And as crazy as this sounds, like I wouldn't give up that experience for the lessons I learned from it. You miss me so much. Yeah. I am really well aware that it happened because they were following me on social media, but now I don't really post things in absolute real time. I'll wait. Material things used to be so important to me. Like, I measured my success by my material things. Right. But there is nothing material that is important to me. It's all replaceable, and none of it matters. Just you. Coming up. What do I think is next for Kim? Maybe a run for office someday. We'd be in the White House, it'd be fantastic. Kim does have all of this potential. What would your advice be to somebody who is just starting out in their own career? Just push forward and work really hard. You cannot deny hard work. Kim is not just talent, she's a savvy entrepreneur. Kim was one of the first celebrities to realize that you could really monetize social media. The reason now that you see hashtag ad and hashtag sponsored across your Instagram and Twitter is in large part because of Kim Kardashian. Kim was ahead of her time. In 2009, she already understood social media could be a valuable business tool. I had a fragrance launching and I did a Twitter poll and I asked you guys, what color pink do you like better, a dark pink or a light pink? And I got thousands of people's response. And I think that's when I realized like, okay, well the fans want to really be involved in the products that you're making. They love seeing their input realized. And I just got a free focus group. This became the first time I think that anybody had really engaged thousands and thousands of people to help her make a business decision. Kim's social media reach is out of this world. She has 59 million Twitter followers, and that's growing. One out of every eight Instagram users is connected to Kim Kardashian. That's insane. She reaches over 130 million people on Instagram. That is larger than Italy and the United Kingdom combined in their populations. In June 2017, Kim launched her KKW Beauty brand. I'm so excited. I'm launching KKW Beauty. It generated sales worth more than $14 million in five minutes. For Kim, social media isn't only about business. It's also about changing lives. I found this woman on social media. Someone tweeted a video of her and I connected with it. When I lost my job, I went into a panic. I was taking care of my five children on my own. I was approached about being involved in a drug conspiracy. I'd be the telephone mule. I was arrested. I was a nonviolent first time offender and I received a life sentence. By the fall of 2017, Alice had served more than 20 years in federal prison. I just felt like the system is so crazy. And if I can do something to help, I definitely want to try. The answer was a long targeted effort. She knew Ivanka Trump. Ivanka put Kim in touch with Jared and Jared was very much interested in this issue. Jared Kushner, Ivanka's husband and a senior advisor to President Trump was a powerful ally. It definitely took about six months explaining about her case, and it worked. 
On May 30th, 2018, Kim and Sean went to the White House. Kim started to talk about Alice and it went really well. We were really pleading our case for Alice. It did seem as if it was something that he wanted to do, but that didn't mean that he was gonna let her out. After we left, we still were like, we didn't know. A week later, Kim texted me and told me to call her and Alice. We did it. You don't know? No, you don't know. You're oh. talking to the news. Oh my gosh, Alice, you're out. Yeah. <laughs> I just lost it. I was free at last. I was going home to my family. <laughs> oh my God, Cam. You never gave up. And you did it! It's, it's an amazing thing that she did. It's amazing. And um, she was... She was just all in uh, every time. <sighs> I realized through this experience with Alice the power that we can all have. That was like the most powerful moment of social media in my life. I was able to help, you know, change her life because of Twitter. Alice Johnson. After finding Alice on Twitter, Kim began actively supporting prison reform legislation. Just knowing that when I speak to the president, that has opened up his heart, and we've now passed, like, bills and laws are being changed because of it. That makes me so happy. Kim Kardashian West has used her platform for good because she played a role in the First Step Act being passed into law. Supporters say it'll make the system fairer, it'll reduce prison overcrowding, and it'll save taxpayer money. It's one of the few pieces of bipartisan legislation to happen. What senators and other presidents couldn't do, Kim Kardashian managed to handle. What do I think is next for Kim? World domination, I have no idea. Anything Kim wants. Now that Kim has conquered the social media universe and proved her clout as an influencer in politics, what could possibly come next for her? Kim has found her sweet spot in criminal justice reform. I see her doing this for a very, very, very long time. Not only does she feel the calling to do this now, but she's seen success in it. She's changing lives, and I think, I don't know, maybe a run for office someday. Does a future in politics sound far-fetched? Can Kim become the next president of the United States? Absolutely. Helping someone like Alice Johnson, to me it opened up my eyes. We can change so much. I just want to do more. Will Kim's dedication to criminal justice reform replace her interest in business? I really want to build my beauty and fragrance brands and just continue to grow them and go to law school. Kim is diving headfirst into her law apprenticeship. I really made this decision after realizing that I didn't know much about the law that I'm fighting so hard for. And it's been so tough managing law school, kids, my career, everything. But it's really important to me. And I think my dad would be really proud. She's carrying on this legacy that her dad left and spending her own time and money really making a difference. And I couldn't be prouder. Kim does have all of this potential. We've just began to untap the amount of potential of power that she has. This is my wife, this is my life. Whether she's getting someone out of prison or she's posting a photo where her nipples barely cover, this is who I married. And that's what we love. That's what makes this game called life exciting. Kim's hard work has inspired a new generation of influencers and entrepreneurs, including her family and friends. 
Kim. She's brought her whole family into this fame. She took everybody to another level, and that's why Kim keeps growing, because she doesn't try to hold people back. She brings them up with her. Whether it's Courtney, Chloe, Kylie, or Kendall, today, they all have a massive following on social media. It's a pretty crazy thing to say when you got half the world just following you, waiting to see what's next. In 2019, Forbes crowned Kim's 21-year-old sister, Kylie Jenner, as the youngest self-made billionaire ever. We always joke around in our family that Kim has always been my mom's favorite, but Kylie has now replaced Kim as the favorite. <laughs> Kim has been a chameleon because she's been able to kind of shift with the times and with who she's becoming, but at the same time, stay true to herself. She's turned her fame into a power base for success in businesses and to support important causes. Kim has harnessed all of the power that she has, all of the fame, the fascination with her, and she has taken that to the White House and ensured the freedom of somebody serving life without the possibility of parole that should set the new gold standard for how celebrity can and should be used for positive outcome. I'm really happy with my life. You can't take back things that you did because they ultimately led you to where you are now. I could say in my mind like, oh yeah, I wish I didn't do this, I wish I didn't do that, but I did them. There's just nothing I feel like I can't get through. She believes strength comes from family, and her own keeps growing. Kim and Kanye welcomed their fourth child, Sam, on May 9th, 2019. Her world went from being herself and her work and her friends and her family to her daughter. And then when Saint came along in North and Saint and then Chicago and so forth, she really puts them before herself. Being a mom is everything. It's the best feeling in the world. I just love being a mom. You know, it's exhausting, it's grueling, but it's the best. I am most proud of Kim for the mother that she is and for the sister that she is. She's a businesswoman, travels the world, is a great wife. She's like a bad, bossy bitch. And the most important reason behind her extraordinary success is really no secret. No matter how many people are looking, I still am going to be me. Next on True Hollywood Story. I've been working at this for years. You can Google me. <laughs> A lot of people didn't believe in females being in hip hop. The industry is definitely male dominated. No, 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 bitches. You can't call me a bitch. Every woman I know has had to fight. I can't hear any women. You can never take away that I'm the first female to ever sell a million records. And it's not because I was sucking no dick, it's because I was talented. You are gonna spaz, you are gonna go crazy. 